Hello and welcome to the video lecture on object oriented modeling and design and introduction. At the end of this session, students will be able to describe and summarize object oriented analysis and design. So in this video, we are going to understand the motivation behind object oriented design methodology. We will be discussing why object oriented, what is object oriented modeling, what is the object oriented development approach followed by discussing the object oriented methodology and then concluding our video lecture by discussing the OMT models. As you can see here, uh, this is a typical diagram of the process of a customer and a developer requirement. You can see here the first picture where this is what a customer explained how he wanted a simple hammock. This is how the project leader understood it, if you can see over here. This is how the analyst designed it and this is how the programmer wrote it. Then further, that this is the way the business consultant described it and the project was documented in this way. And these were the operations that were installed and the most important thing, if you can see, this was how the customer was built. And this is the diagram which shows you how it was supported. But if you see really at this diagram, this is what the, actually the customer wanted, a simple hammock to which he explained in a very different way. So uh, this is the basic uh, problem when you try to explain the user requirements to a system designer, to a developer and it's the way it has been perceived. So uh, why this object oriented uh, thing that came up? So the software crisis came about when people realized that the major problem in software development were caused by the communication difficulties and the management of complexity. In the previous diagram, we have seen pictorially how the customer explained it and actually what he wanted to say and the way it was perceived in a different way. So basically, the problems that were caused in each of the phases were because of the communication difficulties and the Worfian hypothesis says that the human beings are very much at the mercy of a particular language which has become the medium of expression for their society. The real world is built upon the language habits. So then why object oriented? So communication about the problem and the solution all are expressed in terms of concepts in a language. So, concepts are needed to bring order into. But what is this concept? When given a list of concepts like water, salt, ocean, penguins, crocodiles, so what kind of language can be used to create this concept diagram? Or uh, you can say Harry's mental knowledge. Like consider, uh, I have given here these water, water salts, ocean and penguins. Now, in order to dis Describe this or in order to draw this, what kind of a diagram that one would be using? So here you can see that the Harry constructed a concept diagram through which he understands his world and communicates the meaning. So in this way, there's water and can be rivers, can be fresh water or have rivers, then have fish and then you have oceans, oceans have penguins. Uh, crocodiles live in oceans and oceans have salt water. So this is what typically from that concepts or the keywords or the objects had he constructed a diagram. However, this was the way it could have been done. So therefore, in 1982, Grady Pooch coined the term object-oriented design and his idea was to combine a design methodology with language constructs that implements design concept. Conceptual diagrams use object, so inspired by the object-oriented paradigm, programming and languages, object the object-oriented modeling and design is a new way of thinking about problems using models organized around real-world concepts. So the fundamental construct here is the object. So then what is object-oriented? So object-oriented means we recognize and we organize the software as a collection of discrete objects that incorporate 
both the data structure and the behavior. There are four aspects required by an O approach, identity, classification, inheritance, polymorphism. So what is then the object oriented development? So it's a new way of thinking about software based on abstraction that exists in the real world. Now, the overview about object-oriented analysis and design consists of the design review, object modeling technique which further consists of the analysis and the design. There are three models when we talk about the analysis and design that is the object model, the dynamic model and the functional model followed by the understanding of four phases of the object oriented analysis and design. Now let's go to the first aspect of it that is the design and review. So when we say design of a particular system it actually transforms the requirements into an architecture diagram. The architecture diagram can consist of the subsystems, the modules and their relationship or it could be a detailed design, a specification of the abstract interface, data structure and algorithms of each module. Also, it develops a review plan for ensuring the design meets the requirements. Now here, these requirements are of the client or the end user for whom the system is going to be developed. A test plan for ensuring the implementation meets the design. So the design basically has a review plan and a test plan to check vice versa, whether the design requirements are getting met and whether what has been implemented is meeting the design. The next thing is the software development using the object oriented approach. Now this consists of the OO methodology also called as the object oriented methodology. Now the development approach used to build a complex system using the concepts of objects, class, polymorphism and inheritance with a view towards the reusability. It encourages software engineers to think of the problem in terms of application domain actually. Also apply a consistent approach throughout the entire life cycle. Here basically when we talk about the software development methodology, the prime focus that's been given is to the concepts of the objects, classes and polymorphism with the view towards reusability. Further, when we talk about the software development, it consists of the analysis model, the real world requirements. What are the real world requirements that the user requires? So are those actually being understood? Are those actually being mapped? Further, if they are being analyzed independent of the implementation environment. So without considering what the implementation environment is, that is the programming language, the operating system, or is it a web-based system or an application, Android app. So what are the real world requirements? And then design applies the object-oriented concepts to develop and communicate the architecture and details of how to meet those requirements. Now, in this object oriented methodology, that's the object modeling technique process, basically which was proposed by Rombok in 1991, consists of building three complementary models of the system, further adding implementation details to those models and then implementing the model itself. OMT includes a set of phases and diagramming techniques. Now what are those four phases? The four phases are basically the object oriented analysis builds a real world model. System design determines the overall architecture of the system. Object design decides upon the data structures and the algorithm. And finally the implementation translates the design into a programming language. So the OMT technique process consists of these four phases which are integrated 
together and followed in succession one after the other. Now you can see here the models basically consists of the object model, the dynamic model and the functional model. Here we have the analysis, the system design, the object design and the implementation. So the analysis is of what is the real world requirement overall architecture as we have discussed and then translation of the object classes and relationships into a particularly object oriented language. Now I would like you all to think and answer the following questions. Uh, recall a system that you have created on your own in the past. Briefly describe the system. What obstacles did you encounter in the design? And elaborate the process of design and development that you have followed. I hope you have understood a brief introduction of the OOP concepts of design and analysis. So these are the references. Thank you for your patient listening.